Hey programmers, welcome back to Pocket Code Tutorials. My name is CodeGreen01 and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to use physics with your devices and connection sensors. Now, I would have actually been able to do this tutorial if it wasn't thanks to Wolfgang and his Tilt Maze 1.0. I would be dropping his program down in the description below. I studied his program and learned a lot more about how to do this. And now I'm going to show you guys. So, um, I created a simple program that is kind of similar but does a different thing and also programming a little differently. Now I'm going to show you guys how it works. Now let's go into the background first actually and let's check this out. So you guys can see that the background's friction is set to 300. Now well, why is the friction set to 300? Because when the object ball rolls across the background, you guys can see that ball friction is set to 75. Now how does this work? Well the friction determines the grittiness and will actually determine the uh, object's movement speed across another object. So this will affect how fast the object moves on that other object. So say if the background has a grittiness of 300 and the friction on the ball is 75, the ball is going to roll very slow across the background. In fact, if any object that is set lower than the background will roll slower. Now how does the set bounce factor work? Well that just basically affects how high the object bounces. And the higher this value, the higher the ball bounces. And as you guys can see, if I have inside the loop is an if on edge bounce. Now this will only execute once if you have this outside the forever loop, which will cause the ball to clip and go outside of your screen. Now if you have this forever running, this will always execute this command, making your ball and forcing it to stay inside of your screen. Now how does this work with the inclination? Now it's kind of tricky because if you just insert inclination x and inclination y, the controls will be inverted and not work correctly. Now if you add a negative and divide it by three the, on both of them and run this in a forever loop, this will make it to where you can control the ball correctly on your screen using your inclination sensors. So it'll tilt, tilt correctly. It means if you tilt left, the ball will go left. And if you tilt right, the ball will tilt right and go right. Now if it was without that negative, if you were to tilt left, the ball would go right instead of left. Get it? Now, as you can see, this is the final part of the ball's code, and this is collision detection. Now, how does this collision detection work? Well, this just detects the object, and this is listening for when that hits that object. So, how does this work? Well, you just go into object, go into movement property, and when this when the object ball touches object barrier one becomes true, what will happen? is it will be sent back to zero. And as you guys can see, this is the object barrier one. And barrier one doesn't really do anything. It just changes its color forever and sits in that position. It's an object and it's waiting for that object ball to touch it. And the ball basically tells itself, that, hey, when I touch that object, I'm gonna have to go right back to the start of where I began. And that's just how it works. Now let's play this program and see how it plays out. Okay, as you guys can see, it's uh, just rolling around and it controls very smoothly. And when it touches the edge, it of course stays on the edge. It's not going out of my screen like it shouldn't if we already like it should if it was if we didn't use that forever. Sorry, kind of lost a little second brain fart. But um, as you can see, when we touch those objects. It sends it right back to zero, and that's cool. It kind of creates a basketball looking effect. So you could have like a basketball game and create that effect of a bouncing basketball on that object. That's pretty neat. So, um, yeah, guys, uh, that's another way to use it. And <laughs> how would you make a game with this? Well, simple. You could build a maze with these barriers right here all around the screen and make build like a maze, and every time the ball touches that, it'll send the user back, making it that much harder to navigate around the maze and make it to where you're supposed to go. So there's just an example of how to make a simple game right there. So uh, yeah guys, um, I hope you like this tutorial. Uh, I'm not done yet, I do have some context for you. Um, the, uh, Catchbat has a wiki where you can check out the context of the bricks, and I know I didn't go over all the um, physics, uh, the physics bricks in the pro program, so uh, 
here's some context here that I'm going to shoot you guys to. I'll leave this down in the description below. And uh, here you can read everything you need to know about everything in the motion brick category. So yeah, check this out. It also has video tutorials right um, below them, as you can see. Not all of them have tutorials, I don't think, but they give a pretty detailed description on how they work. So make sure you check that out. I'll be leaving that in the description. And uh, make sure you subscribe if you like this video. And uh, yeah, guys, subscribe, hit the bell notification icon, keep your juices flowing, start small, go big. And uh, yeah, guys, your boy Code Green Zero One, signing out.